Last year, I did a video on how to set up the Google Calendar integration in Home Assistant in an effort to make your smart home smarter. Then the Home Assistant dev team had to go and update that integration in the 2022.6 release to make things easier for new users, of course, which based on the comments to my video after that release, broke my tutorial and added some confusion. Wait, that's a serious question? Anyway, we're going to walk through setting up the Google Calendar integration for anyone who's setting it up for the first time after that 2022.6 release. And of course, I follow my own videos. Who else am I going to turn to when I need to automate the boring stuff? Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. Now that Home Assistant has a much improved local calendar, you may be wondering why use that Google Calendar integration at all? And for me, it all comes down to user experience. And my family, like a lot of others, have multiple calendars, both work and personal, that we need to track. And at least for calendars, it's easier to track all of those in a single app so that you can get a complete view of your entire day, no matter which calendar that event lies on. And as of this video, we can't sync that Home Assistant calendar with any of the calendar apps on our mobile devices. It lives completely inside of Home Assistant. And one of the top rules I have when building my smart home is I don't change established workflows for the sake of smart home functionality. So I still think there's a place for that Google Calendar integration, especially if you're already using other calendars with your family to store important events that you want to track inside of Home Assistant. So for anyone who tried to follow my previous video and found themselves lost, let's do an updated walkthrough of how to set up this integration and use it with our automations. If you installed the Google Calendar integration prior to that 2022.6 release, you can skip this video. Although I encourage you to stick around and watch it to the end, you know, for those YouTube metrics. Anyway, since we're connecting to a Google product, we're going to have to do some prep work. The Google Calendar integration does require application credentials in order to connect it to Home Assistant. If you follow the previous video and you already have your application credentials, you can skip this section and jump right into adding the integration. But for those of you that still need your application credentials, let's walk through that now. Over on home-assistant.io slash integrations slash Google, you can find a list of steps walking you through getting access to the Google Calendar API. But if you don't want to read, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. First, we need to head over to the Google Developers Console by clicking this link in step one. Log in with your Google account. And if this is the first time you're here, you will get this little welcome message. Pick your country and agree to the terms. Now we need to select a project. For first timers, you'll have to create a project. This project is going to be what you link your API credentials to. So click New Project in the upper right of this window. Now we need to give this project a name. This can be whatever you want. The only time you'll use this project name is when you come into this console. I can't remember if this name has to be unique across all of Google or just what's in your list. Either way, for this demo, I just left it as the one Google gave me. Then click Create. Next, I went to API and Services and clicked Credentials. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and enable the Calendar API. So I headed to APIs and Services in the menu on the left. This is where you would see some graphs to show your Google API usage. Since I haven't used this account, all of mine are blank. So let's enable one. Click the Enable API and Services at the top. Here we'll search for Calendar. You should get the Google Calendar API in the results. Click on it and then click Enable. Once enabled, you should have a link to credentials on the left again, so let's head there. Way over on the right is a Configure Consent Screen button, and this is where we need to go next. For user type, choose External since Home Assistant will be the user of this API, and click Create. For app name, you can put Home Assistant. For user support email, choose your Google email. Then scroll down to the Developer Contact Information section and enter the same Google email which I think means you're now officially a developer and you didn't even have to write a single line of code. Anyway, now hit save and continue so we can move on. Scopes, we don't need no stinking scopes. So hit save and continue. Test users, you do need, so click add users. Enter your email, click add, then add again, then save and continue. And we're finally at the summary. Now it's time to create our credentials. So click Create Credentials at the top and choose OAuth Client ID. 
Application type is TV and limited input device. For name, use Home Assistant credentials, then click Create. Now, just fair warning, these credentials on the screen have already been destroyed, so don't bother trying to copy them. But you should grab yours before you leave the screen. I always download the JSON so I have a digital copy. But then I just copy the client ID and the secret and store them for later. Then for one final check, let's just make sure that the Google Calendar API is enabled. Head to Library, search for Calendar, click on Google Calendar API, and you should see that it is enabled. If it's not, be sure to click Enable now. The big change in that 2022.6 update for this integration was to remove the ability to set up this integration using YAML. This is slowly happening for all of the core integrations inside of Home Assistant, especially those that have things like API credentials, because storing those credentials in plain text inside of our configuration is not a good idea. So now if you want to set up this integration, you're going to need to head over to settings and then to integrations. This walkthrough is based on Home Assistant 2023.1.7. So if you're running a different version than that, some of these screens that I'm about to walk through may look different. All right, to install the Google Calendar integration, you are going to need to have some application credentials. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you may need to jump back to that previous section and walk through getting those application credentials set up. But if you have them and you're good to go, then we can head over to the integrations and we can click add integration. Here, we're going to search for Google Calendar, which shows up as Google, and then under Google, you can choose Google Calendar. And here, it prompts us to add those application credentials. So, since I already have them, I'm going to type a name for this calendar, and I'm going to grab my keys. And once I've got those in here, I can click Add. Now, I need to click this link right here, and I'm going to need to type in this code that it gives me. So type in the code, hit continue. Now it wants me to sign in, and I'm going to use my demo account. But you would use whatever Google account you want to use that's attached to the calendars you want to integrate into Home Assistant. It's going to tell you that Google hasn't verified this app, and that's okay, because... You're the one who created this app and hopefully you trust yourself. So you can click continue and then you're going to click allow. And after that, your device is all connected. And if we close this and go back, we should see this success message and we can click finish. Now, as you can see, it has four entities already defined for me. It has my main calendar, this national date calendar, which was already added to my demo account, holidays and birthdays, both of which should already be in your Google calendar. Now, this is where you get to decide whether you take the easy way or you go the advanced way. If you're not interested in messing with YAML or YAML files make you uncomfortable, then I would just stay right here and do the easy method. If you want the advanced functionality that I showed off in the previous video, or you're not afraid to mess with YAML files, then you can skip to the advanced method using the timestamps below. The Home Assistant team is trying to make the platform easier for new users and in doing so, removing the need to add and configure these integrations using YAML. So following this easy method does mean you miss out on some of the functionality I showed off in that previous video. But for some, that might be easier, and you really don't lose the functionality, you just have to get that functionality in a different way. One of the big problems with this calendar integration is you can only see one event at a time, which means if you have an all day event on your calendar and some shorter events sprinkled throughout the day, Home Assistant is only going to see that all day event. So to get around that, we'll create a separate calendar for each event type we want to track. This is as easy as logging into your Google account and adding calendars. Maybe you add one for school and one for chores and then you can add events to the specific calendars. This keeps you from having to add hashtags or other search strings inside of the notes of these events, like I talked about in the previous video, which helped us search for those events and put them in separate calendars. Once you have all of your calendars added, you can head back to the integrations page, find the Google Calendar integration, and click Reload. Now, you should have an entity for each of the calendars you set up. And now you can use those calendar entities to trigger your automations. Now, if you want to just use one calendar 
and use those search strings we discussed in the previous video, then you're going to want to follow along with the advanced method next. If you're good with what you have, then you can skip to the triggering automation section using the timestamps below. One of the other big changes in that 2022.6 release is that the Google underscore calendars .yaml file is no longer automatically created for you. And since we rely on it for this advanced method, that caused a lot of confusion in the previous tutorial. And based on the release notes when this update happened, a lot of people thought that that file had been deprecated and was no longer used. But in fact, if we head over to the Google Calendar integration docs and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll find this more configuration section. And if you expand it, you'll find a note that it's not recommended to use these settings if you're new users. Now, I'm not sure what they mean when they say some features are not compatible with other Home Assistant features if you go this route. I've not run into anything that I couldn't do since that 2022.6 release using that Google Calendar file, but it does require you to create it manually. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. For this, you'll need access to your YAML files, either via Samba or with an add-on like the Studio Code server that I'm using on my demo box. Now, we just need to create a new file named Google underscore calendars dot YAML. In this file, we need to add the ID for our calendar. So type dash space cal underscore ID colon. And then the email address of the account you connected your app to when you added the integration. In my case, slackerlabsdemos at gmail.com. Then under that, entities colon. Then under that, dash device underscore ID colon. And give this the name you want your entity to be referenced with. In my case, I used demo underscore events. Then name colon and the friendly name that will be displayed in the Lovelace UI. Under that, search colon. And here we put the string that will be used to identify events. This allows us to use one calendar, but only show certain events in Home Assistant. And you'll see in a bit that we can add more calendars using this method. In this case, I put hashtag event. I use the hashtag to ensure that event alone is not picked up in the search in case the title or the notes in the app already contain the word event. Then track colon true. It's important to pay attention to the indentions in this setup. So take a look at what I have on the screen and make sure that you match the same indentions pattern. YAML is very particular about white space. Once you're good with the formatting of this file, you can flip back to the integrations page and we can reload our integration. You should see that the calendar that was previously named with your email address now has a new name. And if we flip back to that Google underscore calendars .yaml file, you'll find that it's been populated with all the calendars that exist in that account. So now you can use the other calendars for your separate events, or like before, we can just use one calendar and set up search strings for each one. For example, we can add a vacation one and for the search string, hashtag vacation. And we could add one for birthdays, although be sure to give this one a different device ID so it doesn't clash with the other one that was already created by default inside of Google Calendars. So now if we jump over to the calendar, we can add some events for these. We can add a birthday. And in the description, put that hashtag birthday. And we can add a test event and put in that description, hashtag event. And I'm not sure what Beer Can Appreciation Day is for, but it seems like a good one for a vacation, so we'll add a vacation event and put hashtag vacation in the description. Now, if we flip back to our integrations page, we can reload our calendar integration again. And now, if we jump into the developer tools and search for calendars in the States, we'll see our new calendar entities and see that they're tracking our upcoming events. Now, these events will turn on when the start time is reached, but if you want to trigger them prior, one way is using that offset option from the integration. 
This one is a bit confusing, but to use it, you just add something like this to your events. Double exclamation point, dash, zero two, colon, zero zero, which means two hours prior. The first two digits are hours, the last two digits are minutes. Now, if we reload our calendar integration, you'll see that our birthday event is still off, but the offset reached attribute is now true. And we could use that to trigger a notification two hours prior. So while the confusion on the previous video was mainly around that Google Calendar XAML file, I didn't want to leave without doing a little bit on how you can use these entities in your automations. And to walk through that, I'm going to start with an empty automation. For trigger, we now have a calendar option here, and that's the best one to use. You could also use state and trigger on whether or not the calendar turns on, but this calendar option is going to give you more options. If we click it, you can see that it gives us a choice of all of our calendars, and we can pick the one that we want. Then we can choose whether we trigger this on the event start or the event end. And we have the ability to set an offset, which means you don't have to mess with that weird syntax in the heading of your events inside of Google Calendar. You could just set that offset here. For example, 30 minutes. And we can set it either before or after. Now, this automation will trigger 30 minutes before an event start on that calendar. Of course, that doesn't really get into any of the nuances of those events. Like, it's just going to trigger on every event that pops up. So you're going to want to make sure that this is either specific events on this calendar, or we're going to have to use conditions with our calendar events to make sure that we fire only on certain events. And to show that, I have a couple of automations that send out tweets on specific days. In this case, Rex Manning Day, which, if you don't know, is April 8th. And I need to update the trigger here to something that's probably a little better than firing every day at 8 a.m. But we can at least see how we can use the conditions of these events inside of an automation. So in this case, I fire this automation every day at 8 a.m. And the first condition is to check to make sure that at least my holiday calendar is on. And then it checks to see what is the message for that event on that day. And in this case, the Event titles will be Rex Manning Day. Then after that, we can just do our actions. In this automation's case, it sends out a tweet wishing everybody a happy Rex Manning Day. And that's a very simple way of how you can use the events inside the calendar as conditions, either as the main condition of your automation or even as a condition inside of a choose action if you'd like to use those. Hopefully that clears up any confusion left over from the previous video and puts you on a path to leveraging this calendar integration inside of Home Assistant, which you can use to help with notifications for events or anything else you can dream up. Of course, as mentioned before, Home Assistant does now have a more improved local calendar, which can be helpful if you want to keep all of your calendar information local and don't want to use something like Google Calendar. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you want to know more about how I use these events and the types of automations I build around these events, check out that previous video where I go more in depth about the automations. Now, all that's left for us to do is to go automate the boring stuff. And you already have your application credentials. Credentials? Application credentials. Blah! Gorsh! You know. <laughs> Zero wasting film.